Hello everybody today, this is Mr. Gordon, we're to cast some Dota 2 today. Let me turn on the Dota sounds for all you guys. Let me move over to the casting screen and there we go. Reserve Let's get time. this game started here and uh, this is Crescenta Valley High School versus University of Nevada, Reno. This is game two. Um, hopefully this time around University of Nevada will be they had last time. Um, with uh, with Ben basically being somewhat DC, I guess you'd say. Basically, ben. what happened in the last game is that he was playing the Necro for them, and he uh, the game thought he was DC, but he wasn't actually DC. He was still able to play and interact with the game. Um, but then he got the abandon, basically, and all of his gold kept on going um, to the ten um, seconds remaining to his own team. But either way, let's get into this actual match Five here and hope for remaining. the best in terms of everything running smoothly this time around. Crescenta Valley. Banning out the Lycan and the Faces Reserve Void with University time. of Nevada. Banning out the Doom and the Razor. Not wanting to see the Doom again this game, and I understand that one, because Doom can be very, very annoying. Um, but, in terms of the pickups, University of Nevada pick up the Tidehunter and the Viper, with Crescenta Valley picking up the Brewmaster and the Skywrath Mage. So, interesting pickups to start off here. Um, Tidehunter, a very usual pickup. Uh, very, very strong team fight. Brings a lot to the team as a whole. Um, because Ravage is just so strong, as well as the fact that he's such an amazing... Hero, um, which is where I'm 99.999% sure we will be seeing him this game, will be in that offlane position as the Tidehunter. Um, so he's very, very strong there. The other side, though, is uh, Crescenta Valley, where they have the Brewmaster and the Skywrath Mage. Brewmaster, again, Ten we seconds saw it during remaining. TI4. Um, we've seen it ever since then, even before Radiant that, and everything like that. Brewmaster ban. really coming back into the meta really, really quickly, actually, and starting to dominate that... Um, that offlane and the carry position, really, both, um, or even the mid lane position, depending on who you're facing up against. But I think that this time around, most likely going to want to try and run him as the carry, uh, because not going to want to run him in middle Ten lane versus the Viper, remaining. which is where I'm assuming they'll put the Viper here on the side in University of Nevada. Um, Five seconds but the other remaining. one being Skyrath Mage, another one of the flavor of the month heroes right now. Players, um, especially Reserve pro players, time. basically just finally realized, wait a second. Look at the ridiculous amount of damage the Skywrath Mage is able to deal. Like, it's it's insanity how much Dire damage he can deal bad. if you're able to keep somebody in place and he just gets off that, um, that mystic Dire player. Team so pick. let's just go and start to pick up Skywrath Mage, because he's just amazing at his role. And so, you know, Skywrath Mage suddenly coming back into the meta um, very quickly. And honestly, I do enjoy him being here, because he's not a hero that I find um, to be... Uh, I guess you could say overpowered in any way. I just think he's a very good hero, what he needs to be able to do, which is just deal insane amounts of magic damage. So that's always great for me to, be able to have. And he's not a hero like the Faces Void or the Death Prophet that I just don't Ten like to see, or the Tinker for that, for, um, um, for that matter as well. But right now Five we do actually have Tinker available remaining. in the pool as the Enigma and the Wraith King were banned out by Crescenta Valley, and the TA and Shadow Shaman Reserve were banned out by the University of Nevada. So... I need to wait and see what Crescenta Valley want. Crescenta Valley want to pick up next, and I feel like Tinker might be a good choice here. Granted, he will most likely be going up against the Viper in the middle lane, but at the same time, even if you shut down a Tinker in the early game, he'll still be able to get up his farm because this is simply the way that the way that the hero works. But Dream Protector is the pick up here for Crescenta Valley, which does sort of hint towards they might want to try and go for um, a Tinker here because. Free and Protector would be able to keep that Tinker up in the middle lane if he is going up against a Viper, which would be very, very powerful for them to be able to have. Now, I mean, that could mean a lot of other different things. There's a lot of different uh, situations Tree and Protector can work in, but I'm sort of just trying to hint at the Mirana. fact that I think a Tinker might be coming up. Now, Marana is the pickup here for University Dia of Nevada. And honestly, last game, uh, University of Nevada had some issues with uh, with getting hit by arrows. Uh, they really took a lot of arrows to the faces, uh, to the faces of their heroes, but... Now that they have the Marana, let's see if Crescenta Valley will have the same exact problem as they had in the last match and will eat a lot of arrows. So, I'll have to see how well this will play out. Now, Crescenta Valley, though, waiting for their next pickup here and trying Ten to think what I think would be the remaining. best for them. I mean, they have their Brewmaster, which I think could go into the off lane here Five in this sort of situation, remaining. especially with the Tree and Protector, who's going to be able to go and give him that living armor in order to be able to keep him up in the off lane. He'll be okay there. For the trees. But with Nature's Prophet being the pickup from Crescenta Radiant Valley, that's going to be pick. their off lane. They're going to be running this as a Brewmaster carry or possibly in the middle lane. I still think it would be best to put him into the carry position in the tri lane um, than put him in the middle lane versus a Viper because Viper will hands down beat him. Last game, I thought that the TA versus DK would go the way of T TA very easily, but this one is one of the ones where there's no arguing it. Viper's one of the best mid lane heroes versus any hero out there, especially melee heroes. So Brewmaster would just be remaining. completely shut down in that lane. So now waiting for the fourth figure for University of Nevada, Reno, and 
I think their next pickup, well, obviously I think it has to be a support here because we they obviously have, have their uh, Kerry Marana that they have picked up. They have their mid lane Viper and their off lane Tidehunter. They need to pick up two supports here. Uh, in terms of good supports, I think that a Bane or a Shadow Demon could be really, really great here. Um, both of them being really great as defensive heroes as well as offensive heroes because you have a Marana on your team, you really want to have Lion. one of those really nice setups. But they decided to go for the Lion first. Dire team That's a very, very greedy support actually coming out from University of Nevada here because Lion is one of those supports that needs levels. Like, if, if Lion doesn't get levels, he's essentially useless, because he needs to be able to get up his ulti, he needs to be able to get up both his uh, stun as well as his hex. Ten seconds remaining. If he doesn't get those remaining. up, he's basically useless as a hero. Um, and so, Five Lion actually is a very remaining. greedy support, and I'm wondering how that's going to play into their lineup here, because Crescenta Valley really have quite a Reserve few time. great early mid-game heroes, with the Brewmaster as well as the Skyrath Mage and the Pushing Power of Prophet. And on top of that, Tree and Protector with his Living Armor, that's going to cause a lot of issues... For University of Nevada, I feel Radiant like they just want to start the fight. Ban. Now, Ember Spirit is banned out by Crescenti Dia here, and pick. then the Luna banned out by University of Nevada. Trying to get rid of that possible carry. Tinker. And Tinker. Oh, boy. Radiant okay. team pick. So I'm surprised that Tinker made it to the fifth pick. I'm actually very, very surprised with that one. But Tinker is picked up. So now we have to see University of Nevada try and deal with this. Um, I mean, what options do they have right now to try and deal with it? I mean... Silencer's on the board if they want to try and go for him, but he wouldn't really fit into their lineup all that well. Um, I mean, Spectre's a really great hero to have versus the Tinker, because Tinker, Ten you have to just go and pop that haunt, and the Spectre's right on top of him automatically, which is really great to be able to have. Five but seconds remaining. I don't think it's going to be worth it to try and do something like that versus the Tinker, because then you'd have to Reserve run a lot of support, which would mean you have an extremely greedy lineup. Um... And granted, the Greedy lineup did work very well for Crescenta Valley last game, as I really was shocked at how well they were going to come back into that game. But a lot of that does come from the uh, glitch that was happening with the Necro uh, Necrophos. But without that, I think it would have um, would have been a much even closer game and actually possibly gone to University of Nevada a lot sooner than it did uh, with an early mech up on the Necro. But we'll have to wait to see what they decide to go for here in University of Nevada. Um... I'm, I'm trying to think Ten what their best option remaining. is going to be here. And it might actually be to run this Marana as a support and pick up a Five really great carry remaining. versus the Tinker here. Sniper. But Sniper is the pickup. Wow. Okay. Um. I don't know how I feel about that because the thing is is that Tinker with a Blink Dagger, Dagon, and E-Blade is basically able to blow up almost any hero in the game. Especially a Sniper because Sniper has literally some of the worst strength gain in the game and is extremely, extremely squishy. And so if you catch him out as a Tinker, he's dead. It's that simple. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how they're going to try and run this right now because Fish last game was played by the Dragonite, so it'll be a mid lane sniper. Um, hmm. I mean, mid lane sniper versus the Tinker, I don't know how that's really going to work out for, um, um, for University of Nevada versus Crescenta Valley here, but we're going to give everybody a minute to try and Prepare figure themselves out. Battle. And it looks as though Ben is, in fact, in the game this time around. Not technically they just connected, so that's going well for them. Uh, at least the start here. Which though will be the off-lane tide. Yep, and they're going to put Sniper in the middle lane, and then a tri-lane down bottom with this support Marana. I don't really know how I feel about a support Marana this game. They do need to get a Courier, though. Uh, somebody needs to pick up Courier. This is not a pub game, guys. Courier is sort of a required item. For you know, the start of the game. There we go. There's the courier. And oh, that's an interesting little courier. I like that. It's really cool, actually. Let's go look at this. Oh man, I want that courier. Somebody give me that courier, like now. But either way, let's go over who's going to be playing what on either side right now. On the side of University of Nevada, we're going to be seeing Ruin on the Viper this game. The Titan are played by uh, Ben Hawley. Thirty seconds to We're seeing the Marana played by Mark. Heaven's Cloud on the Lion. And then finally, the Sniper, played by Fish in the middle lane. That's going to end up the who's playing what on either side. Let's go and look at the side of Crescenta Valley. So the Skyrath Mage, played by Grenry, or Glenry. I don't really know how it's supposed to be pronounced. I think it's Glenry, or Glenlee, maybe? I don't even know. People need to start to put the actual phonetic spelling of their names there. The battle begins. How to spell it, something, or how to say it, something like that. But either way, um, Canyon going to be on the Brewmaster, and then... Free and Protector played by Wheatmaster. In the middle lane, though, we're going to be seeing the Tinker played by Loy. And finally, Enny Loth is, is in fact, based June, uh, June Harino. 
playing the Nature's Prophet in the offlane versus this Tidehunter, which honestly should be pretty easy for the Nature's Prophet. Shouldn't have that much difficulty dealing with the Tidehunter. Um, just getting some simple lasses should be enough. And the block also messed up by the Tidehunter. So that's going to give this Nature's Prophet a very nice starting creep, um, creep equilibrium here. Um, it's going to be really nice to be able to have that. So, yeah. Top lane, though. This is going to be really, really annoying for this, uh, for this Brewmaster. Because he's going to have to try and go up against the... Um, uh, trying to go up against a Viper as well as a Murano, who are two, of course, ranged heroes, and both of them are going to be able to harass out the Brewmaster pretty easily, actually. Um, but, just so we had a rotation to the middle lane here, and actually, Scrath may took a lot of damage there. Uh, in terms of last hits, though, Sniper right now is 3-1, and one, so actually beating out this Tinker right now. Surprised he's actually doing as well right now. Um, with his last hits and everything. That Sniper is usually a hero that really doesn't do very well in terms of last hits and not. Eyes on the very beginning of the game. Um, but he is performing very, very well right now in terms of that. Um, Tinker, though, I think he's just going to start to get to the point where he's going to start to max out those rockets and the uh, martial machines, and he'll be able to just go and harass out the Sniper very easily, because Sniper, again, very, very low HP. Only 568 HP, only 3 armor. Um, and his strength gain is 1.7 strength gain level. So we'll have to see. Um, top lane. Brewmaster. He has up level 3 at least now, so that's going well for him. So level 2 Thunderclap. Level 2 is up on Viper. Almost level 2 up on the Lion now. He's going to grab it with these next creeps. Yep, there we go. Level 2 now for him. Ron needs to go for level 2 though. Um, down bottom though right now, Nature's Prophet is 3 and 4 with Tidehunter being 4 and 2. And he's just able to go and harass out this Nature Prophet pretty easily because Nature Prophet does not want to tank any Anchor Smash hits from the Tidehunter. So he's going to be able to just go and Anchor Smash him and just go and right click him over and over again and then move back to the Creep Wave. So, we'll have to see what's happening. So, middle lane though still. <laughs> Tinker taking a lot of damage here actually. Sniper really able to harass him out pretty easily here, maxing out that, uh, that take game to be able to go and uh, harass him over and over again. And actually, Tinker, this could possibly be a first blood. Oh, never mind. Fish? Oh, never mind. This could be the first blood. Yeah, there's the first blood, actually. That march of the machines for the Tinker. Able to go and secure that first blood. And now, oh. Oh, Lion not gonna have fun. There goes the Earth Spike coming out. And now, Lion not gonna have fun at all. He's gonna lose his life. Oh, never mind. There goes the right click on. Or a uh, hit onto the Dream Protector. He's going back to lose his life. There we go. And now, we should be back to lose his life. Yes, we will. In fact, Lion Dream Protector both dying there. There goes the cut out for the Blue Master. But it looks like this is gonna be the kill. Death of the Viper. Next, yep. There goes the Death of the Viper. So, Perfecto Valley starting off with three kills here in the game. One kill going in the way of University of Nevada. And so, we'll have to see what's happening next. But, uh, not the greatest, uh, result there from University of Nevada in this top lane here. They need to try and get some more dominance in this lane. That's where a lot of their, um, a lot of their pressure for the entire match is going to come from. But they can't just give away farm and give away levels and kills to the other side like that. Much obliged. Let's see what will happen. In middle lane, though, Tinker, gonna need to start to play a little bit more defensive. And he is starting to do that. He's right now 13 and 9 in terms of lances and denies. Um, you see the Viper also is 16 and 7. So right now, oh, there goes a. Oh, this could be bad for the Scarath Mage. Yep, there goes the no! yeah, Earth Spike. That's gonna be Got the you. death of the Scarath Mage. Viper's actually the one that gets the kill there. So nice little bit of uh, bit of gold going his way right off the bat there. Bringing the kill score to 2 to 3. Here's Nevada starting to make a little bit of a comeback there. TP to the top lane, though, Scarath Mage already coming back. So he's going to be here to be able to keep on fighting if he needs to. And looks like the Brewmaster will train protection. We're going to try and rotate around and move into the lane we here. Go. There we go. Lion will spike. Oh, that's like a on the protector now. Will we see them be able to kill off this lion? Looks as like, though they will. No more like this will be able to nothing. And there we go. That's going to be the for the lion. Lion just losing his life right away there. I use my power as well. Yeah. Take that as Let's you see. will. Dyer's top tower is like under attack. Now, Tinker does have a soul ring now, so that's going to help him sustain a lot and picks up two soul rings basically. But he sold one and then rebought it. There it looks like. Um, so he's going to be able to have that to be able to keep himself up in terms of mana in the middle lane here, which is going to be really, really uh, necessary. Be able to keep this sniper down, be able to spam out those martial machines as much as possible would be very, very important. Um, so this next march would be pretty big for him. Uh, keeping the sniper back when he decides to go and actually pop it. But, at the same time, really just pretty inactive early game right now. Um, trying to see what uh, what everybody's going to try and build. Power treads very early on for the Nation's Prophet here, though. Able to get him some nice movement speed as well as some early stats. The uh, extra int is able to give him some good um, some good attack damage. And actually, this is actually ours. Taking a little bit of damage in this top lane, actually. Um, 
that much. So, there's that. So, let's see what will happen here. It's just sort of really just passive gameplay as of right now. The Marana is rotated into the middle lane here, waiting for an opportunity to try and arrow out this Tinker. If arrow hits Tinker, that could be a pretty easy kill because the damage that will be going into him and then a quick assassin from the Sniper would be enough for you to get the kill there. But it doesn't look like Tinker's going to be falling for that and will be leaving now. So, yeah. Let's just see. Nation Prophet and Tidehunter still just duking it out in this bottom lane. And Tidehunter is winning, actually, pretty easily. Oh, there goes the Ravage. Wow, this is a pretty big... Oh, Arrow does, in fact, it just barely clips the Nation Prophet. Oh. There goes the, the Anger Smash coming out of the Tidehunter. Maybe we're going to Nation Prophet. Now, actually, oh, Lion, pain. here comes the Arcane Bolt coming out of him. And will, in fact, go to get the kill there. And Viper actually gets the kill on the Scarlet Mage with that, getting the return kill. There goes the Overnight and Viper going to be hitting onto the Brewmaster. The Brewmaster is not up his level 6. So this could be a pretty easy kill, possibly, for the Viper. But nope, not going to be able to go Dyer's and kill off Canyon there. And she will be able to escape. But Skyrath Mage and Nation's Prophet losing their lives there. We actually see that Yep, Dream Protector also lost his life there. So if I do the double kill there in this top lane, that would be really great there. Now, oh, never mind, Nation's Prophet going to be coming in. I'm going to try and go for this Viper. There's a Thunder Clap, and Viper going to be losing his life here. There we go, enough damage will be there. Dream Protector getting the last right click in there. They're going to go kill him. There we go. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. What do we see next happening? Bottom. Radiance top tower is under attack. What do we have coming in for this sniper? Looks as though it is going to be phase boost. That's going to bring his damage up even more right now, or at least going to bring his damage Radiance up to a reasonable amount. Radiance structures are fortified. Right He's actually going to get damage. And Marana Arrow hits a creep, it looks like there. Not able to go and catch anybody out with that uh, for any possible kills. Uh, uh. Right now, the pressure is real in this top Radiance lane. Radiance top as, uh, tower is under attack. Shetta Valley really start to pressure this tower quite a bit. Out of 723 HP already, the Siege Creep will lose his life now to the tower. And now Nation Prophet teleporting to the bottom lane, looks like this goes to the Sprout onto the Tidehunter. And Tidehunter, the Gosh, here goes a right click, and now Anger Smash is going to come out as well. That's going to be Whoa. Nation Prophet just losing his life. Just dead right there. And now there goes the, oh, will Tidehunter leave his life? Yes, he will in fact be able to live there with 26 HP. Wow. There we go. Barely able to live, but does live anyways. Um... A little bit of a mistake, actually, there from Nature's Prophet to try and go in on that. You need to understand that Tidehunter in the early game hits like a truck with his Anchor Smash. Like, that's that's 225 damage on a 4-second cooldown that brings your damage down to 60%, or brings it down 60% to only 40% of what it usually is on top of his Kraken shell. Like, Haste. that's not good at all. Invisibility. Um, you one, especially when you're that close to him. So Marana actually is located down bottom. Looks as though they're just going to try and give her a little bit of farm here. Um, move her into more of that core position now that the timer has gotten a little bit for himself. So, let's see what she's going to go for. We do have a TP coming to the bottom lane now from Nature's Prophet. Does only still have the power treads up, so nothing besides that. And now Viper is here. And the Viper is also here. And the Lion is here to support the Viper, but I don't think they're going to be able to go for any kills here. Uh, this Viper just sort of sitting here. Sort of helping me to go and Dyer's help top tower go and is cut, under attack. Cut the wave here as his creeps go and pressure this top tier and tower of Crescento Valley. Let's quickly do a check on the middle lane here. You can see the sniper right now, 43 and 21. This tinker right now, though, is only 32 and 1. So right now, sniper actually going and beating this tinker here in the middle lane. Not what I was expecting. And uh, with phase boots up, also a blade of a lacquer up. Oh, here we go. Arrow gonna fly. Will it hit the Tinker? Yes, it will. In fact, hit the Tinker. This is gonna be the death of the Tinker. No way he's gonna live here. Fish, couple right clicks, and will we see the assassinate come out? No, just a couple of right clicks. And oh, there we go. One more right click. Will in fact be able to get the kill there for the sniper cover. Slowed up by the control shot from the Skyrath Mage. And there goes this salve onto him. And Skyrath Mage doing a lot of damage right now. Phase boots using the Sniper. Will we'll go for the assassinate? Yes, he will. In fact, but goes and cancels it. Not gonna want to go and try and go full on for that one. Um, a Seraph Mage would have actually lived from that one. I actually, Nation Prophet in the bottom lane. Being dove pretty hard there by the Tidehunter, but no reactions there from his team to go and try and help him out there. He will be able to go and survive. The Tidehunter, that is, from being so aggressive. Now, oh, Nation Prophet is the top lane Piper. There goes the Moonlight Shadow going out. There goes the Moonlight Shadow coming out from the Lion, and now looks as though we're going to be seeing Ruin try and escape here on the Dyer's bottom tower Viper. Is under attack. Uh, never mind, there goes some right out from. Canyon gonna be hit a couple times by those, but Radiance really top tower is under the attack. living armor onto him, but great Moonlight Shadow there from Morana. Nice game sense to be able to go and pop that, save to the uh, Viper, and uh, also help save the uh, Lion there who might have actually died <laughs> with the Viper there in that case. Tinker right now, 760 gold, has his bottle as well as his uh, soul ring and a pair of boots of speed, so he's gonna be getting close to his, uh, close to his boots of travel here. 
relatively soon as well. So I think he's going to be able to go for this ancient stack here. Oh, there goes the Ravage being popped. He's going to be trying to go for the Nation Prophet here. Daddy. There goes the Anchor Smash. Will we see the Tyner be able to go and kill off the Nation Prophet? No, we're not, as he just popped the Ravage for basically nothing there. I think it was over on the sidelines there the entire time, so he could have possibly gone with uh, Tyner and tried to go full on die for Nation Prophet. These marching machines could be going to get him quite a bit of gold here. 1,300 gold. And no, this is getting pretty close to death right now. Wow. Very close to death, actually. March machines. Still doing a lot of damage to these ancients. Will he be able to get... Yep, he's going to be able to get all these ancients. 1,876 gold for him. And a top lane is actually where the fight is happening. There goes the Brewmaster. They could be trying to go into the Viper right now. Viper taking quite a bit of damage. Will they be able to kill him? There goes the Rock. And now, Viper going to affect this life now. Sniper going to be taking quite a bit of damage. Will they be able to kill him off? Never mind, here's Reckless on to Wheat Master right now. One more Reckless would be enough. No, never mind. There goes Reckless coming in from Morana. Will he be able to get the kill there? And now, Brewmaster is sitting over there. Come on, this from the Sniper. Doing some more damage. Arrow flies from Murana. Will it hit anybody? Doesn't look like it. No. Gonna be off the mark there. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Now, Sniper gonna fall back. Looks like that's gonna be his full Yasha. Yep, full Yasha is now up to the Sniper. Not going for the greed build that uh, we sometimes receive from snipers in pro games. Going for things like the uh, Mask of Madness and to, um, or even things like Hand of Midas, um, which I've seen occasionally. So... That's always, uh, that's always... Dyer's nice. bottom nice. tower nice. is under attack. He is dominating this match right now. He's only 1-1-1 one, one, and one with 60 lasses and 26 denies. Yes, the phase Radiant's the yacht, middle tower very is hard, under very attack. Quickly. But the same Tinker does not have his boots of travel. This is when things start to get scary if you're on the side of University of Nevada. Oh, there goes the Earth Tech going to be hitting, and now the line opens as well. And there goes the double rocket. And now Tinker is trying to say goodbye to your head. To the sniper, but the sniper's going to be okay. The pressure shot flies hitting him. Oh, Rocket's not going to hit from the Tinker. Is there a little bit out of range there? Either that or the Sniper was just barely out of vision there. The Sniper will, in fact, live down to 180 HP. And Nation Prophet not going to be able to go and TP in on this. There's no way you can try and kill him off. Now, Love the Haste is also picked up for the Nation Prophet. So he's going to go for the same exact build he went last game, going from the Power Treads into the um, Maelstrom right afterwards. Um, so that he can go and push lanes effectively. Now I'm wondering what Sniper's going to go for as his next item. Will it be the full Mantis style, or is he going to try and go for something um, a little bit more... A little bit more, I guess you could say, uh, greedy, and then instead pick up something with the Maelstrom. Um, just get up that pure damage, basically. Um, so, there's a lot of different options you could really have in terms of his uh, in terms of his item choice. And I'm wondering what he's going to actually decide to pick up here. Viper is going for the mech for his team. Doesn't quite have it up yet, though. But it looks like this time University of Nevada will, in fact, have a mech up for their team. At least. Now, Tidehunter as well already has up his Blink Dagger. He's currently 2-0-0. Oh, and, oh. um, and so, he's been farming up very well. Living Armor's out on the T1 tower down bottom of Crescenta Dyer's Valley. Bottom tower now, the Sniper is under just going to be able to sit right outside the range of that tower and just... Plink it down with his rifles over and over again. This time in the middle lane, Viper does kill off the Tinker. Um, so yes. that was a kill that just happened there. As I was watching the bottom tower fall, and Dyer's there we go. Bottom, bottom tower the middle lane, has Bottom tower falls. Radiance top but, tower is under attack. You know, really Radiance nothing, structures nothing sort of are there. fortified. Um, sniper early Dyer's levels bottom here. Tower like, is under attack. Levels here is extremely good at pushing because he can just sit here right outside the tower range. Oh, there we go. Radiance Fire top tower has fallen. Find anybody there. So more or less just trying to blink in and see if anybody was there. Possibly get off a nice ravage, but not really. Anything that was there to go for. This time, though, top lane does fall, Dyer's and it does fall to is under the Nature's Prophet. It looks like he's the king of the top lane to go and help. So that looks like it's basically a one for one tower trade, but at the same time, they're taking a lot of damage. Dyer's from bottom this, uh, tower is under T2 attack. Tower down bottom. Now, Ravage is available for the Titaner, so that could be pretty deadly, especially when you add on the fact that this will just mean Sniper is going. Constantly right click and now, oh, arrow flash from Morana, will it hit anybody? It doesn't look like it, as they will be able to go and dodge it. Oh, never mind. Oh, barely misses the Brewmaster there. Just ran out of the duration, though, or the uh, range. And Brewmaster barely living there. I just walked into it, really. Marshman sees out for Tinker, going to try and push back his lane a little bit here. And now Paul is going to be called out from the Skywrath Mage. Apparently they need a pause for something, I don't know what, but we'll have to see. What the, uh, what the plan will be here, um, what the pause is for, everything like that. Let me get a quick swig of monster here. I'm um, just about going through actually a full monster at this point. Mm. Here we go. So, let me just see what the next item pickups will be on either side. With it being 14 minutes, and let's actually go and quickly just look at the gold lead with um. Ash is a little bit less than a 5,000 gold league going the way of University of Nevada, Reno. A little of the experience, but a 7,500 experience league going their way as well. So UNR, University of Nevada, really doing very, very well right now um, with their farm, or at least their overall gold and experience over the side of 
uh, Crescenta Valley. In terms of items, though, Sniper really being the one that has most of the items here, although Tidehunter is right there with him. I should wonder, how is the net worth looking? And they're actually basically neck and neck right now. Let's actually move over to this screen now, from now on, where this is actually very interesting, where we see basically the top four heroes are within, what is that, like, less than 300 gold of each other. They're very, very close. These top four t uh, heroes on either side, or top four heroes in general. The problem, though, is that the top three are all part of University of Nevada. And then right after those top four, the gold drop-off is just insanity. About a 2,000 gold drop-off between number four and number five there. Brewmaster number five, of course. And that's with him in the carry lane. The problem is that he was trying to go up against a Viper. Who's one of, as I said before, one of the best heroes to go up against any melee game in the entire game. Now, Rocks gonna fly from Tinker Throws. Now, some lucky the arrow flies from Ron and Octavia to hit. And now, there goes the shrapnel out from the sniper. Tinker can quite a bit of damage, but not quite enough to kill him off or anything like that. Um, these monster machines, though, are gonna be the bane of this uh, sniper's existence, as he just has such little HP that he needs to be very, very careful. The same as I think can be said for the lion. Both of them just so very, very squishy. We'll have to see what happens for them. Um, 1,700 gold up to the Sniper right now, so I'm thinking he is going to be going to the Ultimate Orb uh, next to be able to go and pick up that full Manta style for himself. Radiant's really top to tower is under attack. In the top lane, going to be able to go and push back this creep wave here, keep the uh, keep the push from happening. Really great job from be able to do that. Keep them in control of this map right now. Um, but Sniper, he's pretty low on HP right now. He's going to move into the jungle now and uh, try and farm up there. Never mind, he's just going to stack it up. Stack it up for somebody, it looks like. Um, possibly even just himself. He's able to clear uh, through the jungle pretty easily just by going and kiting a little bit. Granted, it's not quite as efficient as the Radiant's other middle off, tower is under attack. Good to see. Dream Protector. Just healing up this middle tower, and this is the problem when you're trying to face up against a tree and protector. It's the fact that if you can't totally take down a tower with a single push, then you basically have to completely restart with the next push. It's that simple. Arrow flies, not gonna hit anything there. Because I've already way too far back there. Way too far forward, actually. The arrow flying this way. Um, but, yeah, there goes Living Armor again, and by the time they get this push in, tower's gonna basically be almost up to full HP again. And now, Dyer's middle tower is under attack. From the tinker. Coming into this middle lane, going to be able to try and defend here a little bit. And he's going to be able to successfully defend. Um, we're seeing a March of the Machines, I'm assuming, coming out. Regeneration! Of the March of the Machines. Bottle, the young, everything like that. Now, if you prop this top lane, this is not going to be fun. So there goes the shrapnel, and here goes the right place. There goes the shrapnel, and here goes the right place. There goes the shrapnel, and here goes the right place. There goes the shrapnel, and here goes the right place. There goes the shrapnel, and here goes the right place. There Yep. Dyer's right bottom there, tower is under attack. Uh, now, if you go and look at the items as a whole, we can see still that Brew does not have a blink dagger up for himself. Granny is getting relatively close to it right now, only about 400 ish away top from it. Tower is the under problem attack. is that he's still already 17 and a half minutes in, he does not have his blink up. And as a brewmaster that was your carry, you don't want that to happen. You want to have him have that up a lot sooner. Rockets fly from the Tinker going to be able to go. Oh, there goes the arrow coming out for this. Oh, Marana hits the arrow onto the Tinker Tinker. There goes the ultimate coming out from the sniper. There it goes hitting, and that's going to be the death. Oh, never mind. There goes the silence, and then a couple of rifles going to be coming out. Marana going to be able to go and get it, but actually Tyler just kind of grabs it there. And then they should probably hold it to flies through. Tyler just a little bit low, but he's going to be able to survive here. He needs some Dyer's sort of top tower no is under though, attack. Two blinks are up right now on the side of University of Nevada. So they all they have a lot of initiation potential here. It's going really great for them. Radiance Middle Tower Redactor. is under attack. Find an invis room. Invis Grab that. It's going to be really great to be able to Dyer's uh, bottom tower scout is under out attack. the enemy team here. See where they are. See how much HP they have. Things Radiance like that. Radiance Middle and Tower has problem. fallen. Let's take the middle tower here. That middle T1 tower right here. Killing that one off the east. Yeah. Team some nice gold. Dyer's Dedication structures is tough, are fortified. Piper Shenta Valley High School. Uh, the fish on the sniper is going to be able to go and pull off this tower. Dyer's bottom tower is lion. under attack. The only one that's not there actually is Viper. Radiant's middle lane. tower He's actually is under attack. Neck, which actually I find pretty funny. Oh, the big armor comes out of the tower, and it looks as though they might actually be able to go and kill off this Viper here. As there goes Dyer's the silence. Bottom tower like there goes, is under oh, attack. Oh, well, they better get killed off. It looks like he will in fact be able to escape. And the thing is that now, they could have actually denied that tower, but they decided to instead stop there. And you can tell that the tree and protector was basically yelling at his team, like, don't you dare deny that. I can heal that up with, uh, with my living armor. So watch it, guys. They don't want anything silly happening. Now, this tower, though, 
up to 182 HP, so it's out of deny range now, um, from where it was before. You need to see what's going to happen there. Brewmaster the top lane does finally have his blink dagger, which is going well for him. Um, now, look over at the gold lead. Over 5,000 gold lead right now going away at University of Nevada. Experience over, oh, over 10,000 experience going away as well. Now, oh, Sniper's moving pretty far forward right now. Pretty aggressive, you actually. Look at the gun. Oh, there goes the Raptors coming attack. out. Boy, this is going to be oh, bad. That's taking a little bit of life. Sniper's taking a lot of damage, but they're going to miss the on to the Viper. Will he lose his life here? Yeah, there goes the Arcane Bolt. That's going to be his death. It's actually the tower here. gets the kill there. So no one specifically gets the kill. There goes the arrow going to fly. Going to get on three protector. There we go. There goes the gush. And now an angle smash. Yep, that's his death. Now, we're actually trying to get the split available, but he's not close enough. There goes the drunken haze on the item right now. He's going to try and run. Doesn't have Ravage available, but he already has it with Perseverance, so he's getting close to that. Or he's going to try and build into his, um... Try and build into his Refresher Orb next, which if he gets set up quickly here, will be devastating. Arrow flies, will not hit the Brewmaster. Wow, that's the second time the Brewmaster is right in the line of fire of the arrow. But it Dyer's just runs out tower of it, so it just attack. reaches its max length right before it hits him. So there we go. Now... Bottom lane, we see Mr. Prophet Cordon. He's going to push the bottom lane a little bit here. We have this instant in from the Viper. Mr. Prophet has no town portal scroll, no PC scroll. So there goes the Viper. He's going to be hitting him. Now he's going to try and TP away. He's going to be a side shot here. And there goes the TP. Yep. He's going to be able to escape. Not the Viper can really do. There's no way to be able to stop him at all. And now we have actually the Blink Dagger up for the Tinker now. So he's starting to get his farm. That's the problem, is that you can't... You, if you shut down the Tinker in the early game, he'll still just get his farm back by the nature of the way that the hero works and the way that he gets his farm. If you shut him down, it's only for a time. He'll still be able to get up that farm with those Martian Machine stacks or Martian Machine usage and everything like that. All he really needs is those dudes to travel a bottle and a soul ring for him to really start to have a massive impact. Yeah. Bottom lane. Oh, there goes the arrow coming up. Do you want to really hit somebody? Yes, it will. In fact, hit the Skyrath Mage. Skyrath Mage is stunned out, but now there goes the Gush, and uh, Angus Knight's going to be coming out next. There goes, yeah, that's going to be his death. Marks of Machines is coming out, though, from the Tinker right now. Pushing back this bottom lane here. That's Living Armor with Pop in the tower, but not going to be able to hit him very long. That's just that from the Viper. And then Arrow Flash from Ronan, not going to be hit anybody there. But that is the death of the bottom T2 tower fallen. of the Dyer there. So Crescento Valley losing their bottom tower. I don't know right now has the ability to go and pick up that uh, that full refresher orb. This is gonna be a 21 minute, maybe a 22 minute ish refresher orb up for the tide hunter. Like it's he's scary farmed right now, really when it comes down to it. Um, and so I don't know if Crescenta Valley will have an answer to a refresher tide hunter this early Radiance on in the game. Top tower is under attack. Gold over 7,500 gold league going the way of University of Nevada in terms of experience. Over 12,000 experience league going the way of the University of Nevada as well. Tinker, but he's able to just instantly blink away to and save his life there, and, you know, probably taking advantage. damage. But now, Sniper with the Mana Style, he's able to go and pressure the pretty easily with these Mana Style Illusions. Things are coming out onto Sniper trying to say that that's the real woman we're going to try and do something. Shrapnel! Uh, Shrapnel comes out again, and nope, there goes the Silence on Sunday. There was just going onto the line. Line needs to try and run. Will he be able to escape, though? No, there goes, yeah, there goes the Thunder Clap. He's able to get the kill there. Now, Titan Hunter. Does have the refresher orb up and available. This is huge. Now, oh, there goes the rabbit gonna be coming out. There we go. There goes the refresher and rabbit coming out again. Gonna be hitting on three again. There we go. And blinks away actually. But now just track coming out from the Skyrath Mage, dominating double kill for the sniper. And they now see that Tynar has up a refresher orb. Has fallen. And there we go. Um, this is not looking good for Crescenta Valley right now. In terms of the items, that's what you're seeing right now. Looks like we have Marana actually Radiance going for an Orc in Malevolence with, one of, with an Oblivion Staff picked Dyer's up and making up the next Oblivion Staff attack. already there. This is going to pick up the recipe for the full Orc in Malevolence now, which is not all that far off from. Um, in terms of gold lead, still leading uh, in terms of experience and gold there for uh, University of Nevada. Arrow flies, not going to be able to hit anybody there. Uh, nobody was attack. there farming the large creep camp. Now, if you look over at the uh, at the items here, again, we see that there are two blinks on the side of University of Nevada. There's two blinks on the side of Crescenta Valley as well, so they have that going for them. Um, but even with the Brewmaster, the team fight that, um, that Crescenta have right now is really not that much in comparison to what University of Nevada has just because of their golden experience lead. Like, the problem when you're facing a sniper is the fact that Yes, Sniper is a hero that is very, very easy to kill, and if you shut him down in the early game, he's a hero that you is done for. It's that simple. But this Sniper is 4-1-4 now with 117 lasses and 28 denies. 
He has a Manta style, the makings of a full Manstrom already. Phase boots are Wraith and a Wraith band. So his farm is way ahead of anybody on the side of um Crescenta Valley right now. Um, and even then the Viper and the Titan are both ahead of him even. Um, ridiculous farm here. Um, and then Viper. He has like a mech for his team. He has like a drums, a Yasha, and a ring of Aquila. So he's doing very well for himself as well. Arrow fives from Rana. Will it hit anybody? Doesn't look like it. Oh, Moonlight Shadow, though. They're able to spot this as it happens right in the Observer World. And Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, that's going to be a dead, dead Skyrath Mage. There goes his death. And now Sniper moving back up to the high ground here. Need to back off here, and now looks as though they might try and use this as an opportunity to go and push this middle lane here into the T2 tower. As he has mail from up now, so his right click damage. Radiance um, bottom tower has fallen. Box, is pretty ridiculously high right now. Is that going for him very much? So there goes Marana arrow flying, not getting anybody there. But sniper is going to sit back here and just blink away at the tower over and over again. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Marana is well helping with the right clicks here. Now we're not really anything that we can see happen from Crescenta Valley to be able to go and Dyer's keep middle off of tower, tower is under attack. Living armor does come out, but there go down at the stacks. Not even any um, any backdoor protection on it, as there was no creep wave ahead of it. Radiance now arrow five. Oh, gonna hit on the tree, but we see some initiation coming in here. Tyner is gonna stop it there, goes the rabbit to be hitting. We have the refresher, there's another the rabbit, the double rabbit, right the tanker field to keep them right on down. Mega kill for the Tinker right now looks looks though we're gonna see the lion with his light here. Oh, according from the Radiance nature's prophet there. We actually have to have attack. Sniper trying to back off here. Oh, never mind. Oh, they're probably gonna be trying to go on to the Sniper right now. Sniper gonna try and keep himself alive now, but it's not gonna matter. So it does affect lose his life actually with the nature's prophet killing him off. Radiance bottom tower go. is under attack. Kill going over to the nature's prophet there. So three for two right now in terms of that Q fight. Three in the close score to 22 to 12. Radiance top tower is under Valley. attack. Taking the teamfight very Radiance well there, and I feel like a lot of that came from has greed fallen. from University of uh, Nevada. Using that double ulti from the Ravage, or double ulti from the Titan, or right on that Tinker, really set them up badly in that teamfight, because of the fact that then you had no Ravage for the rest of the side of uh, Crescenta Valley, um, if you're on the side of University of uh, Nevada. So, I mean, really not the best uh, teamfight coordination they're coming out of University of Nevada. We do have the um, Manda style almost done on the Viper right now, and there goes also the Orca Malevolence, now finished up for the Marana. If she's able to get that Orca Malevolence off on a hero such as the Tinker, that's pretty big to be able to have versus a um, versus Tinker. Silence to be able to keep him down, keep him from casting those spells. And the biggest thing is keep him from being able to rearm. That's what makes Tinker the hero he is. If you don't get the rearm on Tinker, he's a basically a useless hero. That's what makes him good, essentially. Um, so... Have to see what will, uh, what will be the next game plan here from either side. If you look at the gold lead, that's actually a pretty big turn down um, of University of Nevada's lead as it moves towards actually Fresh Crescenta Valley. Um, about a 9,000 gold lead now going the way of uh, University of Nevada, down from about almost a 13,000 gold lead. Over the experience is basically evened out here, so no extra, like, I guess you'd say, um, lead coming out for Trenta Valley, something they know getting it close to them, but they do stop the bleeding, basically. They're able to keep it where it is, and they aren't losing anymore. They aren't hemorrhaging experience, essentially. Now, full mana style is up on the Viper, so he's going to be able to Illusion. fight some more now, giving him some more, uh, more tank ability, as well as, of course, that mana style usage to be able to go and bring more damage out into the table. I think there is, there is a, not Tinker. I could get any Tinker and Sniper mixed up for whatever weird reason. Two of them. I don't know why I could have the two of them mixed up, but Sniper here with his illusions. Go to push back this creep wave a little bit here. And uh, the thing is, is that right now this uh, this middle tower was down very low, but is now back up to full HP in that middle lane. All the towers on the side, or that are still up on the side of uh, Crescenta Valley, are up to full HP right now. The thing is, is that University of Nevada took a, you know, didn't take the best fight trying to take that tower, and so they Dyer's lost middle a tower lot is under attack. Tower, and they didn't gain anything really from it. Oh, here we go. Things are going to cut up there. Oh, there it goes. I don't think the damage to silence goes on, but the... Radiance top the, tower the is under attack. Now, oh, he's stunned out there, but don't think he's going to be able to be picked off here. His Viper is sitting around here. 
I think he was trying to spot out something, but I don't know if he's going to be able to see anything. No, Tyler has the Ravage available. There we go. Oh, Anger Crash comes out. There goes the Ravage. He's coming out. There's a sign on the Blue Blue Professor as well. Will he go to get the secondary Ravage? There's a secondary Ravage. That's going to be the Blue Master as well. Skyrim and the Dream Protector. All three of them dead. And now they're going to go possibly push up a little bit farther here. And Pings are coming out to try and defend. Tinker needs to start to lay down a lot of martial machines here, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to stop this as Tinker will be able to start side that martial machines and Tinker will be able to tower. Not not very well placed. Arrow Fly is not going to be able to go and hit on the Tinker there. And I owe you one! These sniper, sniper dissolutions. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Able to do quite a bit of damage to the tower here. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Tower. 600, about 500 HP now. Just clanking away at it with that hero over and over again. The armor does come out though. Radiance top so tower is it under attack. Which is though, um, University of Nevada have basically just given up on trying to take that tower. They've backed off and they're saying, you know, we took a great team fight there. Let's not try and uh, push our luck. Tyler Radiance top tower is now, under so he's attack. He's gonna try and go for the Shivas for his team, which at his current rate of farm, he's gonna have it very, very quickly for a uh, for a tide hunter. We do have the Mjolnir now finished up for the Snipers. His attack speed is starting to go through the roof now, as well as his all-around relative damage with the Fox available for the Mjolnir now. So, he's doing very, very well for himself. Over the gold lead. And yeah, moving back up towards about a... Uh, almost about a 10... Uh, 11,000, I mean, gold lead. Probably about a 10,500 gold lead right now going the way of the University of Nevada. Over the experience, we have over a 15,000 experience lead right now going the way of the University of Nevada. So leading in terms of both of those metrics. I think the ultimate orb is up on him, so he's going to be trying to go for his sheep stick as quickly as possible. Or a scythe of ice, I guess you could say. Um, he wants to get that up as, as quickly as possible to be able to lock down heroes. Because if he can get a hex on somebody like the Titan when he tries to blink in, or possibly even Tinker, I mean, not Tinker, Sniper, um, if he can get that off, Viper, even anybody that's able to get that hex off would be very, very great. Now... Let me see what the next move will be. As it looks like their base is giving Sniper some more farm, saying just keep on getting your farm up. Um, but I don't really think that's the best idea, because yes, Sniper can be a very, very good carry if you have the uh, you have the front man for him. And I guess Tyner will be able to play that role with his Ravage available, everything like that. Um, Arrow Fly is really not going to go there. That's what they're trying to go for. But um, the problem is that they're going up against a Tinker and a Nation Prophet, two heroes that are able to put a lot of global pressure um, around the map. And so, Tinker also, in my mind, in my opinion, in the hands of a, a nice Tinker player, is one of the best Kills. late game heroes of the entire game. At the same time, Marana in the top lane, or not in the top lane, the enemy jungle kills off the Brewmaster. And now, Scarf finishing a little bit of damage there, but not quite enough really to get, in, uh, get killed off. So. Marana. Sort of looks like she's gonna try and throw an arrow there, but decides not to, in fact. Now, 26 to 12, this middle T3 tower is back up to full HP at this point. Well, you know, 36 HP off, but who's, who's counting? Um, he's just probably pushing the bottom lane here. We're 32 minutes in, about 32 and a half minutes in at this point. Um, in terms of a gold lead, about 12,000 gold lead in terms of experience. Um, over 20,000 experience to go in the way of University of Nevada. And actually, top lane, that's the death of Tinker, actually. And that could be a big, big opportunity. There is buyback, though, for Tinker, so he has that going for him. But if he doesn't have to spend that buyback, he doesn't want to have to because of the fact that he needs his gold. He's pretty far behind right now, being fourth place. Or fifth place right now. Oh, and, under and oh, here we go. Looks as though we're going to be seeing protection. A lot of damage. Arrow flies from the run. Not going to be able to hit anybody. They're going to start going. There we go. Brewmaster now going to get over there. We go. Brewmaster will be now popped. And this could actually be pretty bad for him, in fact, because he's caught out here. This could be pretty big. There goes the Air Panda going to be losing his life. And now Fire Panda will be the next one. Um, there goes the Air Panda going to be losing his life now. Sniper Radiance being very good. There goes the Elven coming out from him. Going to fly. Going to hit Fire Panda. That's going to be the death of the Brewmaster now. Sniper does lose his life there as Tinker's able to go and kill him. Very, very Dyer's aggressive play, really. Is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Just over-aggressive play there from the Sniper, really. Um, to try and get that last kill on the Brewmaster. And think of the last kill, but... I mean, right now their pushing is essentially stopped because he's basically most of their pushing. What's on the courier now for him? Nothing, actually. Oh, never mind, he's sending it over to the uh, Secret Shop. So I'm wondering if this is going to be... Um, this might actually be an MKB up for him. I think that'll be the best item for him, actually. Um, 
those mini stuns on top of his regular mini stuns would be pretty massive, actually. Radiant's bottom tower is under Arch attack. machines able to go and cover this creep wave and get them all back and uh, keep them from hitting the tower, which is always really nice. Viper taking a also shot to the face. It looks like there, but he's okay. No real, uh, no real fear for him. Radiant structures are fortified. Same time though, down bottom actually, we see Nation Prophet pushing this bottom T3 tower. So this is this is the problem when you look at University of uh, Nevada. Radiant's so bottom they tower have to try is and under deal attack. With the oh, there goes the blink away from the Nation Prophet and Lion, not able to go and get anything off there. Looks like he was going to try and go for his stun, but he's yeah, probably just a little bit too quick on that blink dagger for the Lion. Now. Sniper, that's a point booster. He looks like he's gonna try and go for a Scotty. I mean, that's the only only item he can be going for here. And I mean, I guess it's a good item because it gives you a lot of tank ability. But I still think I would actually prefer him to go for an MKB first of uh, first. But I guess you could then re uh, replace the Wraith Band with the uh, MKB later on, and I guess the uh, Scotty will give you some nice tank. But I don't really agree with the Scotty here. And I'm somebody that loves Scotty on basically every range during the entire game. I think it's amazing. But I also make some pretty bad item choices quite often. But I still feel as though the MKB would just be an all-around better choice for him in this game. Um, even the Daedalus, I think, would be a better choice because he has a lot of attack speed right now. All he really needs is just the pure damage. Be able to come out. Sniper. And I mean, I guess the one good thing again is that it does make him very, very tanky. Um, well, relatively tanky. As a, as a sniper, he's everything. Really going to be really going to try going on top of the top. Rabbit going to come out for the Titan. We see the Raptor stand on another. Oh, that's a triple. Kill coming out on the side of the Shanta Valley. Now we're going to see the old coming out from the Master, and this is going to be three dead, four dead actually inside the Shanta Valley. the one buyback from the Tree and now Sniper going to be able to go for these Brewlings right now, trying to get some more right clicks in, but not going to be able to, as the, they will in fact be able to escape. That's three dead on the side of the Shanta Valley, the one buyback Brewmaster Ultimate is in fact dead, and now we're going to try and move in here. Radiant's bottom get off tower kill is under attack. On this T3 tower, but living armor is up, but it doesn't, I don't think it actually matters, as they're going to keep on beating down this tower. Now, the tower will fall, there was a trap go coming up to get them Dyer's high ground middle vision. Tower has they need to fall back a little bit here. Dyer's but middle they're going to fall back here. The Nation Prophet going to be hitting onto the Skyrath Mage. Will they try and go for something here? Doesn't look like it. This might not be the best idea. There it goes. Oh, never mind. That's going to be the death of the Skyrath Mage. Maybe right now. Yep, never mind. There we go. There goes the Gushers. going to go and get the kill. And there goes the Dyer's middle racks middle falling. The Shanta Valley lose their middle lane of racks. 36 to 13 right now is the kill oh, score. Hey. And look at the sniper. He's gonna go and pop his mana style. He's gonna try and pressure this top tower to help his team here. There's a goldie for 20,000 gold going the way. University of Nevada arrow flies, not going to hit anybody. Dyer's top tower has fallen. And now Tynan are blinking forward. He's Dyer's top barracks are under attack. Drunk and haste. He's gonna try and run there with the sheep guard as well. Fish now coming out. Oh, Tree Redact, this is going to be his death. Yeah, one more. We'll be back able to go and get that. There will be the Hex now on to the Brew Master. We're going to take a lot of damage. We're going to off. And there goes, yeah, there goes the Gush. There goes the Ingen coming out right there. Now, there's the GG coming out from Crescenta Valley. Ending that game. Sniper, a risky, risky pickup, but able to go and bring home the game for the University of Nevada, Reno. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming in for this matchup. We're going to be going on to game three. Both teams have one game under their belts. University University of Nevada, one game. And then Crescenta Valley, one game. So this is basically now a best of three matchup. We're going to have some more great Dota as we had in these last two matches coming up in just a couple of minutes, most likely. So thank you very, very much for being here, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. It means a ton that you are, in fact, here. If you do enjoy my casting personally, do make sure that you go and follow me at twitch.tv slash Nistagord. That's my Twitch channel, of course. And then also on Twitter at at Nistagord Dota, at symbol N-I-S-T-E-G-O-R-D D-O-T-A. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. And we'll be back in just a little bit with the next matchup between these two teams.